I'm Scott Al Miller. It's the 13th of November, 2023. This is my vlog of daily life living in Leon, Nicaragua. I am at the Nika Expresso station. You can hear all the buses going by and trucks here in Leon. You can see the people waiting for the morning bus. It is about 6.15 as I'm recording this. I have been here for half an hour and pretty soon the bus is gonna show up. It's coming from Chinandega right now. It is gonna pick us up. We are gonna get on and we're gonna be on our way to Costa Rica. So. I have a lot of adventure. I've been telling you about it for days. I'm actually making it happen now. So I'm on my way to Costa Rica right this moment. From there, I'm catching the flight to Peru and from there on to Bolivia where the real interesting stuff is gonna start happening. But I'm bringing you guys along for the ride. This is our kickoff. I have no idea what's coming on this video because I'm recording it as it happens. I'm waiting for the bus right now. We're gonna get to all of that right after the bump. Because I did some of the episodes ahead, the dates on some things are going to be a little bit confusing. So you're watching this on the video dated for the 13th. I'm actually recording this on the morning of the 12th, and it's actually about the events of the 11th with a little bit from the night of the 10th. I know that's going to be really confusing. Just bear with me that as we do the vlog with travel and just everything, there's a couple days of leeway that you have to remember and things. So I'm going to do my best to make the dates as straightforward as possible, but it's going to be confusing, especially for me. You guys don't really care what dates you're seeing. Mostly that's for my dad just so you can figure out what's going on. But the quick wrap up is on the night of the 10th, we had this amazing concert at the house that I didn't get to show you yet. So I'm going to take you there just real quick and show you a little bit of the amazing stuff we had going on. This is why we were up till 3.30 in the morning. I got to bed a little bit earlier, but there was this huge party. Um, it was going on like at the house. We had to move everyone onto the patio because there was some rain when the band got there. So Cadejo was there and Caroline Lopez was there. She just jumped in and, and sang with the band. And we had a really cool night, lots of friends packed on the, on the patio for a private concert. And I took, if you're watching my shorts, there's a great one where I just, I take a Tonya beer and I go and I sit down in a, in a patio chair and then bring the camera up and show the band like, like this big private space and a huge band playing right there, like only in Nicaragua, right? Like so cool. So that was our night. And then um, I got to bed, got up, and was was heading to the bus at, at five o'clock in the morning. The bus ride was fantastic. Uh, no problems at all. Air conditioning worked great. If anything, it was too cold. I was actually a little bit cool the entire time. Uh, kind of wished I had a jacket and jeans. I was in shorts and a t-shirt, not this one, but another black t-shirt. And um, the bus ride was, was comfortable and easy. It takes about 11 hours. It actually picked us up at about 6.45, um, and that was almost exactly 11 hours that dropped me here at the San Jose Airport, which is the next to last stop on the bus. There's, well, you can go on to the bus terminal downtown, but before that, you come past the airport. And the airport's actually in, um, it's not that far from, from the city itself. As, as city airports go, it's pretty close. But it's, um, and sorry for the hum in the background, it's a hotel room with an air conditioner and uh, getting to the air, the airport area uh, is very convenient. It's up in the mountains. It's a it's gorgeous area, just like the city proper, uh, and it's much more modern. This is like a, I feel like a planned city built around the airport zone. So it's loaded with every convenience that travelers would need. Of course, this is Costa Rica. So San Jose operates a lot like Orlando does in Florida. This is the main point of entry for tourists into the zone. So especially when you come in to the airport here uh, or the bus to the airport zone, because all the the buses go through the airport zone too and the airport is kind of towards the beaches so the beach traffic never goes into the city you have this 
really large area full of restaurants and shopping and malls and rental cars and all these things to accommodate tourists. And honestly, it feels like a really high-end Florida. Uh, it's lower cost than Florida, but higher quality service and goods. Everything's cleaner. And of course, the weather is nicer. It's very pleasant because we're at almost 3,500 feet. Uh, so it's, it's a really nice area if you're looking for that very uh, spit and polish kind of uh, tourism area. Like you really feel like almost Disney World-esque coming into this area, which is a really interesting change of pace because living in Western Nicaragua, a non-touristy part of Nicaragua and coming to the most touristy part of Costa Rica um, just by bus and watching the transition happen, it is so weird how as polar opposite these two areas are in neighboring countries that used to be a single country uh, that that's so connected and yet these two couldn't be farther worlds apart uh, in this area. And it's one of the things I like so much about Central America is this intense diversity that you get in such a small region. And in many ways, it reminds me of Europe with the exception that in Europe, you have this big linguistic change between different areas. And in Central America, you don't. But as far as the distances between places, it's very similar. The ease of getting around, Europe definitely has a little bit of an advantage there. Uh, Europe doesn't have the borders in most cases. There are a number of borders here, but everything, including the boarding cro border crossing yesterday, smooth as silk, probably took no more than five minutes for me total between both Nicaragua exit visa process and the entrance into Costa Rica. So simple. Um, and for those wondering, if you're leaving Nicaragua, you have to pay, I believe it's $5. I had to pay $1 for uh, the, the customs handling paperwork, to pay $1 for the Alcadia. That's the municipal tax. There's always a girl standing outside. It's always a girl, trust me, uh, standing outside of the, the uh, immigration offices the border control offices uh and they as you go in the door they say one dollar and they give you a little slip of paper that's the alcadia tax the municipal tax you always have to pay that that's a real thing of course there are people with me they're arguing with them no i paid for something else why do i have to pay this like it's it's border control they know what they're supposed to tax you uh, and then it's three dollars to the border control agent themselves um, so i think the total comes up to five dollars there's no cost for going into costa rica um, and the whole thing was very very fast and even with the whole bus load of people i bet it was under it may have been actually under 30 minutes probably was like 30 35 minutes but we were through all of border control so quickly and um and just everything on the trip very, very smooth. Uh, the bus does stop uh, partway through Costa Rica because you need a bathroom break. For those wondering, there's a bathroom break uh, just before the Nicaraguan exit border. Uh, there's a duty-free area. Tingue is there, and um, you can use the bathroom there. You can pick up drinks or whatever. Like There's a lot of people selling things in stalls, and then... Um, it should be called the stalls because there's little little like outdoor stalls to buy things and then bathroom stalls. Like it's the only two things they have. Everything's a stall. And then you cross the border uh, and then there's no bathrooms in the border zone. So definitely if you have any, any potential need to use the bathroom, use it at uh, the duty free. And then um, once you're into Costa Rica, they go a couple hours and then they stop at a mirador that has just the tiniest view of the ocean. Uh, and it's real fast. So get your food to go if you're going to go, but there's, there's bathrooms and it's a restaurant. Uh, so it's very similar to taking the interlocales buses in Nicaragua, where they often stop at a place where you can grab food if you're super fast. But unlike those, this is a bathroom stop. So they let you off the bus. They don't bring the stuff into the bus and you can jump out and go into the restaurant. And the restaurant is a buffet. They're prepped for this. And and you can't get a lot. I mean, if you're looking for like some fried chicken, that kind of thing, they have they have a decent selection for a buffet and they move a lot of people through. I'm vegetarian, so rice, beans, I got some macaroni salad. It's tasty. It was a good snack for the bus. It's not going to make you sick. Like it's very travel friendly type foods for the most part. I might got a little bit of salad and they had some, some refrescos, some fresh made drinks. Those are really good. Uh, it's very cheap, just easy. Grab that and just get it to go. You can eat there. And if they call you for the bus, just grab your stuff and jump onto the bus uh, and then eat it there, which is exactly what I did. I had rice, beans, uh, salad. And so I got most of the way through it and they're like, oh, it's time to get on the bus. And really it's not that big of a rush, but I didn't want to be the straggler holding people up. So I jumped on the bus with my takeout and ate it there. Um, just great bus experience. And it's $40 for, I know it's 11 hours. And a lot of people are like 11 hours on the bus. I can't even fathom what would make me ever do that. I'd rather shoot myself. Right. 
the reality is, is it was comfortable, it was relaxing, zero things went wrong. The first time we did it with the kids, the air conditioning was broken and that was not pleasant. And so we had this really bad experience of it being really hot and my wife and kids don't handle the heat very well in that kind of situation. I was actually decently comfortable, but I, I'm used to the Nicaraguan temperatures. So, so they're right on that edge where it bothered them. And because it was a broken one with no air conditioning, it also had some roaches in it. So that was a really unpleasant experience uh, doing that. But beyond that, and they tried to fix it. Like they sent a chaser bus, they tried to fix it and they, they just weren't able to. Um, but this time when everything worked, it was, everything was clean. Everything was air conditioned. Everything was comfortable. It was handled so well. And for so little money to go from, from Northwestern Nicaragua to uh, San Jose, which is past the midway point of Costa Rica and up into the mountains and along the coast. And it makes stops all over the crazy place along the way. And it deals with the border. It makes the entire trip so easy. And I know some people are like, well, I would just fly, but there is no flights between the countries because the buses are so cheap and easy because most of the traffic is, is already south of the airport in Nicaragua and going to north of the airport in Costa Rica. Like you, wouldn't go that far in most circumstances were the exception. Um, there just, there are no flights. So the bus is the option other than driving or taxi. Um, so you have to do that. Um, it just is what it is. I do wish that they would put a train between the two. That would be the most amazing thing ever, but the bus does a great job. Um, and trains are a challenge because of the mountains in Costa Rica. That'd be very difficult. Doable. They do have a train here. It's right next to the hotel. It's right in front of me. Um, but it's, it's fairly new and they're testing it out, uh, as far as like how efficacious is the whole thing. Um, but uh, I really do recommend the bus. It is, it's for me, it is a nothing experience. It is so just, Oh, $40 get down there in reality. I don't need to go as early as I do get on. It's so comfortable. Take all the luggage you want and just get dropped off where you want in Costa Rica. I can't realistically ask for a better experience than we get for that, especially at the price. So uh, it really is good. Like no reason not to do it. So I got here as I was getting close, uh, one of the people who live in my little GoPro box, uh, that we've been talking, we've talked a bit previously and he's on my Instagram and stuff. So we, we have, um, a good rapport and, and, and you know how to contact each other. And I had noticed he had posted a picture of him drinking a Tonya yesterday on, on Saturday night, on Friday night. And I didn't really think anything of it because a lot of my, my viewers are sometimes in Nicaragua or whatever. And I don't think he posted exactly where he was. So I didn't put two and two together. Um, then he posted something while I was on the bus. So I'm looking at like my Instagram quite a bit more because of what are you going to do on the bus, right? And, and I looked at it and I'm like, wait, did you just say you're having another beer in San Jose? And he's like, yeah, it was in San Jose. I missed a flight yesterday. Now I'm stuck here for two days. And I'm just, I'm like, well, what are you doing? And he's like, I'm just hanging out by the airport waiting for my flight. I'm like, he's like, and he said, I really wish I would have been, I would have known I was going to be stuck here this long. I would have run up to Leon and see you. And I said, um, well, I'm pulling into San Jose right now. Completely coincidence that we're both, in, I mean, because this is a different country, right? And that we're both by the airport. It turns out he's like two blocks away. I'm in the hotel. He's got an Airbnb around the corner. So I'm like dinner. He's like, heck yeah. So, uh, I got in. Um, got to the hotel just real quick. If you get dropped off and you are trying to get the hotel shuttles, cause you get dropped off at the airport, the bus drops you off on the street, but it drops you off at a bus stop in the middle of the turnaround for the airport. So this is very easy. Just walk either direction from where they drop you off with the, This is the Nika Expresso bus. I'm sure all the others drop you off in the same spot and you just walk either way. And there's a loop that goes to the airport. The airport's very small, bigger than Managua, but not big. And you just go through the loop and in about the middle of the loop, again, not very big, is the spot where the hotel buses stop. And there's a sign on the wall so you can find it. Um, and so I'm at the Hampton that you can see here, uh, doing my obligatory um, traveler in their hotel room vlog update. And I never get to do these. I kind of feel like a real vlogger now. I feel like Karen Nate when they would do all their, we're in a new city, we're vlogging from the airport uh, hotel thing. Um, and you get this very identifiable hotel room light. It's hilarious because you can tell, like, I can't fake that this is a hotel and, um, uh, you just wait in the middle and then the shuttles came by. Uh, and so I got picked up, taken to the Hampton. I probably took about an hour here just unloading, starting some up uploads and stuff, which I should mention my first day of video, everything is uploaded already to my backup. Um, so that's, so far, first day in, the internet situation has worked. It's, it takes every moment to get the things uploaded, but all the stuff that I recorded on 
the actual 11th, the things that you were thinking of as today's video, except for what I'm saying right now, all already uploaded. So we're in great shape with that. So I feel good about that. Um, got that going, posted a few little, like I'm here shorts and things. Uh, and then we headed out, went to the Taj Mahal, took an Uber, which I highly recommend in Costa Rica. There's taxis everywhere trying to get you to take them. And, and I don't really trust taxis if I have any choice. And the Uber system for the most part works here are some things we've had problems with in the past that sometimes they don't pick you up like they get nervous because the rumor we've heard is that there are some organized crime that go after the uber drivers and they can be they get they can get scared and decide not to pick you up and so you do get cancellations here at a pace you don't get in other places so just be prepared for that, that you may have to order multiple ubers and that's normal um that did not happen to me at all today but in the past it has maybe things have gotten better uh but uh, Uber came and got me really easy, took me to the Taj Mahal, which is in a mall. Again, we're in this area, is very close, right? Just loaded with restaurants. There's a Rosti in front, which is like a Rosti Pollo in Nicaragua, except a little bit, little bit Costa Rican flair on it. And there is a Taco Bell around the corner, McDonald's. There's lots of things. Like you just have choices. There's a casino right here, very polished area. And uh, the Taj Mahal in the mall, delicious food. We both got salmon, coconut curry. Uh, we got a big bread basket, got some amazing rice. I miss Indian food so much. I, I, I need to come to Costa Rica more often just for the Indian. And it's worth mentioning, I've never had a bad Indian meal in Costa Rica. Now, legitimately, I've had very few bad Indian meals in general. Like, uh, it seems to be a food that, that's very consistent in quality um, when you go around the world. But I have, like in Texas, had bad Indian. So it does happen, um, but Costa Rica 100% has been amazing so far. So I don't know if it's just like very few Indians came to Costa Rica. Those that did were all like very serious about cuisine. I have no idea, but <laughs> it is a consistent thing that we love coming here for the Indian because there's just none in Nicaragua, which if there are any Indians who know how to really cook and, and watching my show and you're like, boy, I've been wondering in what country I need to start a restaurant that, that it'll be appreciated, please come to Nicaragua. Please open a restaurant. Um, and uh, so very good dinner. We had a great time hanging out. And then we got there at like 9, 9.30, ended up staying till 11.30. They actually closed the whole place. And they're like, can we just give you some water? You can hang out at the table. We're like, um, sure. And uh, so we stayed after they closed. Really, really nice. Service was great. Food was great. Um, and then I came back to the hotel. And honestly, I just uploaded a few things. I went straight to bed. Very tired. Didn't have any coffee all day. So I was which it was intentional, so it's very rundown. Um, and uh, then tomorrow I will be here in the hotel. I have about five hours from the time I get up until I have to get out, check out. Um, and then I'll be going to the airport where I have another five hours. So I have basically a 10 hour day of waiting before I get on my flight and do a 12 hour day of flying. Uh, <laughs> it's going to be a very long day tomorrow, but as far as I know, all of my ducks are in a row as best as they can be. Everything has gone well so far on the first day. I'm going to try to edit some of this before I get out of the hotel here. I am mostly just chilling and relaxing um, in, in Costa Rica. No plans tomorrow whatsoever. Just going to do breakfast at the Rosti in front and make life as easy as possible. So the adventure has begun. I'm doing the obligatory uh, hotel room post, which is actually pretty cool. I like that sometimes I feel like a travel vlogger and, I'm, and things are changing in my life that are making travel something that's going to be a lot more, a lot more coming up. There's just going to be a lot more travel. Um, and so my channel will always be based in Nicaragua, I sure hope. Um, but I've always wanted to be doing a lot of travel vlogging and we're going to be moving a lot more in that direction. And this trip is really kind of an inauguration to that. There were a lot of hiccups. This was supposed to have already have happened a month ago. It was supposed to be a much longer travel thing, but we're going to make a lot of this happen. So uh, I'm looking forward to a lot of feedback on that. Scroll down, of course, leave your comments, ask your questions. Nicaragua questions still very much appreciated. I'm not changing that. Like, don't, don't think that that's, uh, that's not happening. Um, but I'm going to be doing a lot more travel, which is something I have a lot of background in in global travel and uh, uh as always if you'd like to help support what we're doing here you can buy me a coffee at buymeacoffee.com slash scott allen miller that comes directly to me it's like patreon and you can be one of the sponsors thank you so much but a reminder please don't use that as a method for communicating with me if you want to say like thanks for the show things like that that you just want to say say something great i will see it eventually um, but it is not a it's not a replacement for my email Please don't use it for that, for anything timely, because I can easily go a month between seeing the messages. So 
<laughs> so if you're looking for me, that is not a good way to reach me. Uh, email is the thing I will see and I do my best to, to keep up on it. Everything else is secondary or never. Um, but, but I tell everyone that so you always have a way to get a hold of me and my email is absolutely everywhere so there's no need to ever ask for it. It's on every video, on every description, on every everything. Right? It's on the page. You don't even have to go to anything. And uh, uh, as, as always, like and subscribe. Tell your friends, share this online, post it on social media, and definitely stay tuned because this is the boring bit as we get to the interesting stuff. The whole, like, tomorrow I'm taking the flight through Peru to Bolivia, and once we're in Bolivia, like, I'm going to be really sick from the altitude. But beyond that, it's going to be super interesting. I've never been to Bolivia. There's going to be really cool things to see. It is a super neat country that very few people go to. And I'm spending the bulk of my time in a city almost no one ever shows. That's the coolest part is we're going to be showing Cochabamba. And, and while there are shows from Cochabamba, there are very few. Um, and we're going to hit other things. But I'm really excited to see someplace that isn't on the tourist path in Bolivia. That's going to be great. Thanks for joining me. I'll see you all tomorrow.